So it finally happened, today is the day. We're going to release a beta of the new Falco X. This is an open beta for everyone. And I'm gonna go over how to set it up, the things you need to know, uh, and where to get help. All right, so before I get started, I'm gonna tell you guys how to get support for Falco X. Don't contact support through our normal channels because they're just gonna be overwhelmed. And part of being a beta is that we want you guys to support each other. So there is one great way to get support. Uh, go to flight1.com slash discord. What discord is, is like a chat server where you can communicate by voice and text. And there's channels set up there to uh, help each other. Uh, you want to use the beta channel in Discord, and um, so basically go to, like I said, to flight1.com slash Discord, sign up for an account, and use the beta channel for any support requests. We're also going to open up a Facebook group of, called Falco X Testers. Uh, go ahead and search for that. You can uh, set up there and uh, ask questions there as well. But those are going to be the two ways to support. Please don't overwhelm our tech support people with support requests, um, or they will probably go insane. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is before you install this beta, and I'm going to show you how to do it, uh, you want to make sure you already have a good flying quad in the old Flight One stuff. So make sure that you've uh, set up multi shot, you have a good flying quad with multi shot, and uh, make sure everything's working before you do anything else. The other thing you're going to need to set up Falco X is a Revolt OSD board. There is no configurator at the moment, there will be eventually in the real release, but for now, there's no configurator. So you're gonna to have to use an OSD board. Um, the OSD board though is very cool. It's the fastest way to set up a quad ever. You're gonna like it a lot. Uh, now that I've done it, I never wanna use a configurator anyways. Okay, so you got your quad all flying great. It has an OSD board in it. You wanna install Falco X. The first thing you're gonna do is go to flight1.com slash beta. That's where we keep all the betas. You can go there to get the Falco X firmware. You're gonna then use the old configurator to put this in DFU mode, or you can also jumper it. If you're not sure how to do that, um, there are videos on our YouTube channel that show you how to DFU. Uh, I recommend just using the jumpers. It's the easiest method. Once you do that, you might have to change your DFU driver. Again, there's another video. It's called Zadig uh, on how to fix that as well. So do that and flash the new binary. Once you flash the binary, what's going to run you through a setup process. It's going to automatically detect your radio and it's going to start the process from there. So I'm going to go ahead, set this quad up. Uh, one thing you probably want to do too is your camera, if you cover it with something, it's going to make a nice black background so you can easily see the OSD. So, you know, just put something over your camera is the easiest way when you're doing the first setup. You're going to need a fully charged battery. Please make sure it's fully charged. Uh, I recommend a 4S battery if you have one, just because you don't need the power of the higher stuff even if you use it. If you don't have one, you can use any battery. Just make sure you remove the props, uh, remove the prop nuts, and uh, get everything ready to go. So here we go. We're going to use this quad to do a setup, and I'm going to take you through it uh, step by step. Okay, first things first. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I got a little piece of tape here. Just going to go ahead and put this uh, right on my lens. Um, just do something that doesn't leave a residue. Electrical tape's actually pretty good, masking tape. It's just gonna make it so it's easier to see the OSD. Uh, some, before you get started, you need to make sure your quad is set up like our pinouts. That means whatever receiver you're using, it needs to be on TX1. Check this over carefully. If you go in the configurator, you can actually look and see what ORT it's on. It should be ORT1 uh, TX pin. Uh, if you don't have it on there, it is not gonna work. For the new Falco, we are hard-coded to do certain things. We're not gonna give options because options are confusing. It needs to be on TX1 no matter what the receiver is, it's gonna be on TX1. There's gonna be a certain pin for everything in Falco. Uh, the VTX, if, you, if you're not hooking it directly to Crossfire, that should be on TX3. RX3 should be where you're putting your telemetry. So you need to make sure the pins match our pinouts. These have been our pinouts for years, but people tend to put them on all different things. The old stuff kind of detects where it's at, but the new stuff, it, that just doesn't make sense because there's no reason to use any other pins. It just makes stuff not work correctly. So first things first, make sure it was set up with TX1 uh, before you get started with anything. Cover up the lens, make it easier to see, and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so the next step is pretty simple. Put a battery on your quad uh, and make sure there's no props again. Uh, and plug it in. 
When you first plug it in, you're gonna see an OSD. Now, in the beginning, it might look a little, you know, messed up. Uh, you, maybe the text is fuzzy or whatever else. Uh, you can see mine's a pink background because of the tape, but it should be easy to see. Once you see that you have a clear, non-fuzzy, it's not ghosting image, uh, you can hit the switch to um, pick that. What it's doing here is it's alternating between PAL and NTSC because we don't know what camera you have. So you wanna make sure when you have a good solid OST, you hit the switch. So there you go. So now it's saying move the sticks in circles for two seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That what that's doing is calibrating the sticks. Now it says lay down quad flat center all sticks. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. At this point, make sure you don't have a throttle curve. If you have a throttle curve in your radio, it's gonna mess things up. All right, so it says only move the throttle to the bottom. There you go. It says only move the all stick, move the all stick left. There we go. Only move pitch stick, move pitch back down. There we go. Only move roll stick, move roll left. And we're gonna do that. So now it says, when your props are on, which side of your props, left prop is the highest? So this is picking reverse props or non-reverse props. Depending on what you pick here, it's gonna do everything appropriately. Now here, you, I recommend reverse props. They fly better, they don't do y'all spins of death. Uh, they push you away from things. So I, we definitely wanna run reverse props. So y'all left for reverse props. It's not gonna fly any different, it's just gonna be better performance. Place your arm switch in the arm position, move roll stick right. So I like to arm when I'm pushing my switch out, so I'm gonna leave it there. Now it says make sure props are off, roll right and yaw left to confirm props are off. So here you go, we're doing that. Now it spins the first motor. It's asking which motor is spinning. Uh, it's the top right one here is spinning, as you can see. And so we're gonna push the corner where it's spinning. Now the next one spins. We're gonna push both sticks in the corner. That one's spinning. And the last one, and one more. There we go, we've now picked the motor direction. Are you using BL Heli 32? We are, so we're going to roll right for yes. Is the front left motor spinning counterclockwise? So since we picked reverse props, it needs to go counterclockwise, which it is doing, so we're gonna roll right for yes. Then it's gonna test the next one. Roll right for yes. It's gonna take the next one, roll right for yes. And the last one, roll right for yes. You can see this is even easier than our configurator before because it tells you what direction it should roll. Put the quad on its nose and push the roll stick to the right. So here we go. And the wizard is complete. You are now done. This quad has been set up. So now that we have this set up, we're gonna take you through some things you may or may not wanna change to get your quad flying amazing. Now that we are done the setup, we're gonna to wanna to power cycle the quad. It's all set up, it's saved our config. We can unplug it. Let's just wait 10 seconds just to be, you know, make sure everything gets cleared. And we're gonna plug it back in. Once we've done that, you can see it sets up a default um, OSD. I'm not gonna run you through how to uh, change this. We could do that in a future video, but you can actually change what's on the OSD in the OSD. The one thing I do wanna show you how to do, and we'll have further videos after this, is how to pick your tune. What's cool about the new stuff is you can pick the, default, the different tunes with the OSD. Before you had to hook up the configurator, you had to put the tune, you had to go outside and fly it. This is beautiful because I can test them all right in the field. Uh, the other thing you can do is change your ESC protocol in the uh, OSD as well. Um, which uh, you might want to do. If you have our new ESC, which we know not many people do, uh, D-Shot 32 is the way to go. This um, is basically 32 kilohertz D-Shot, true 32 kilohertz D-Shot. Works amazing with the new ESC. It may work with the old Bolt uh, 32s and the Spark 32s. Uh, go ahead and you know try it on those. Uh, most people are having success with it as well, but the new ESC has a much faster processor, so it's more aimed at it. Um, you can use multi-shot no matter what you do. That flies amazing. Uh, that's true 32 kilohertz. So that's why it flies well. Uh, the other options are D-Shot 1200, which is actually going to run at 16 kilohertz. Um, if you want to do really good Koopa for racing and you have an older ESC, we recommend using that. If you have BL Heli S, you can run D-Shot 600, but we really recommend running multi-shot on the older stuff. Um, Falco is going to be aimed and optimized for the newer hardware. Uh, I know some of you people, you know, don't want to hear that, 
But the, pr the, the fact of the matter is, by us aiming stuff at the newer stuff, we're gonna have amazing performance, and that's what our goal is here. We're still making it work with the old stuff, it's just your optimized performance are, of course, gonna be with the newer technologies, because the newer technologies let us do uh, cooler things. Um, now, so what we're gonna do, to go in the OSD, it's pretty simple. You basically put both sticks in the bottom left corner. What's nice about this is regardless if you have mode one or mode two, it's, they're both gonna work. Uh, so you hold it in the left-hand corner and you hold it till the OSD pops up. Now, to navigate this OSD, uh, you use y'all left and right to go through the different menus. Um, the stick's coming a little undone, but there you go. So you y'all left and right, which will take you through the different menus. Right now we have eight different menus and to go through them, just y'all left and right. What we're gonna do here is, we've, let's pretend we've flown the squad flies amazing, but we wanna dial in our tune. We can either do a custom tune or use one of the built-in tunes. If it's a clean build like this one, especially if it's using our hardware, um, like this is the Willy Motors with an amazingly stiff frame that's designed at vibration dampening. We've mounted it just like my videos. Every quad I ever build this way flies perfect whatever I do. I'm gonna use the Blackbird tune for this freestyle quad because it just flies insane. Uh, Blackbird works hard on its tune. It uses all our latest tech. Um, so it is a good tune to use if you can. Now, be warned, the Blackbird tune is, I would call overtuned. It's really tuned perfectly for good quads, but if you have a more noisy quad, it could just fly out of control. So um, if I'm gonna do these tunings, I would arm it, line of sight, in a big grass field so I have time to, to uh, kill it if it flies out of control. What important thing is I said there is line of sight because you don't realize it but your goggles have a significant amount of latency and if you arm it with goggles, by the time you disarm it, it could just fly out of control. Uh, but line of sight, you'll be able to kill it immediately. You, you don't perceive the latency as much but it, there's a lot there and, and you'll see a big difference if you do line of sight. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I am going to pick the tune for Blackbird. So we're gonna go in here. The first thing I wanna do is change the ESC protocol. Uh, for Blackbird's tune, I want Multi-Shot or D-Shot 32. I'm gonna pick uh, D-Shot 32, and I am going to go to the tune, and where it says Preset Custom, I'm gonna pick this, and we're gonna pick preset Blackbird. You, if you picked custom, then you can actually change the numbers. What's nice about Blackbird is it's gonna change it all for you. It's gonna change the filters, it's gonna change the pits, it's gonna change everything. Uh, some interesting things in here you can change is sim boost, like on the old stuff. Uh, you can enable or disable sim mode. If I'm using a can tune, I'm not gonna change any of those, but if I'm tuning myself, I will. Something also new that we did a video on is the um, dynamic, uh, AA. Uh, basically, I like to enable this because what this does, I said in my other video, more or less it, it clamps down on noise when it can. It gives you the really fast controls, but it does some dynamic uh, anti-aliasing in, in places where it thinks it can without interfering with the feel of your quad. Uh, it works pretty well. Um, I like to put enable that and then go ahead and put the strength on low. Um, try the different ways. Always leave dynamic on and try low, medium, high and see what you'd like. If you're having a noisy quad, a quad that isolates, oscillates, or a quad that maybe has some jello in a straight line, this will probably get rid of it. You can try it automatic and not automatic. Automatic should work great, it's our, it's our new tech. So once I do all that, I'm going to go to the last screen and I am gonna hit save and exit. Now, when I do that, you hear it reboot. Now, it's asking me to power cycle my flight controller. I only have to do that here because I've changed the ESC protocol. Most things in here, you don't have to uh, power cycle it. The issue is uh, the BL Heli 32 still has some little iffy bugs, some full throttle crazy stuff with, with detection. Um, so we're gonna just power cycle it to make it safe rather than have it try and automatically reboot it. Along those same lines, um, I'm gonna do another video on BL Heli 32 update and settings to change, but um, I recommend you updating to the latest BL Heli 32 because you know it's relatively new. They've definitely fixed a lot of things, so it's always best to have the latest uh, software. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in. 
Um, and my OSD boots up, and there I go. I'm ready to fly this quad. We're gonna do some more videos on some more features. I recommend you join the beta channel on Discord. Ask them for some questions. I'm sure some of the guys have been testing it for a while will be glad to answer questions, and I'm sure some of the guys that have done it for a while will be glad to do some posts on different things you can do. Uh, this new Falco uh, X, um, I, if for those of you that have been in a cave, is a complete rewrite. There is not one line of code shared between Flight 1 and Falco X. This is basically Flight 1 version 10. That's where the X comes from. Uh, we've done everything from scratch. We've done everything what we interpret to be the best way, the most optimized way. The optimizations and the speed this thing runs are insane. Uh, it's aimed at new hardware to, be ha to squeeze every ounce of features out of the latest stuff. And uh, it's just gonna get better and better. But go ahead and give us some testing. Uh, give me some comments. Tell me what your experiences are like. I know we're going to be flooded with some issues, and I know we're going to be flooded with questions, um, but we're going to be there and help to answer them as best as possible. Now, please like, subscribe, and comment on this video. Uh, please hit that bell so you get notified of new videos, and uh, be sure to comment in the comments and let me know if you have any questions or what you want to see me do videos on in the future, especially related to Falco X, so I know how to answer your questions so I don't have to tell them everyone individually. I'd love to do some videos and, and uh, answer all your questions that way.